Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series on interesting topics of modern C++ programming language and in this particular video we will talk about vectors versus dq. Wait, what it is? Why do we even compare vectors and dq? They are pretty much same, right? We can use vectors and dq for pretty much everything and they are interchangeable. There is a slight difference that you know what in dq you have pop front but apart from that, both are similar. If this is your understanding, no, you are wrong. And that's the reason why you should see this video. So let's go ahead and see in code what is the actual difference between vectors and DQ. This will help us to understand under what circumstances we should use vectors and under what conditions we should use DQ. So let's go ahead and start our code. So to properly understand the difference between vector and dq, we actually need to remember one thing which we forget pretty much every time we use STL containers. The thing which we forget is that when we create a container like vector or dq along with the parameter, the type, there is another thing which is being passed automatically by STL container and that is called allocator. Okay. So the actual syntax of vector is this or for that matter dq. So what happens is this is being passed by default. That's why we do not pass it. So pretty much every time we use the inbuilt allocator of the STL and it's a good practice because you know what? It's one of the most efficient allocator we can get. But to understand the difference between vector and dq, we need a small tweaking over here. We need to use our own allocator instead of built-in allocator. And it's very easy to use our own allocator. So let's go ahead and create our own allocator. So it will take a type. I'll say, let's say type. Okay. And I'll create a struct as my alloc. And I am deriving from the built-in allocator. I am passing the type. Okay, so I will not override all the functions, but the major functions which is being called when the memory is allocated or deallocated. So when the memory is allocated, it returns the type. The function is allocate and it gets a size. So in here, uh, this is our custom memory allocator. So what we can do is that we can say return new uh, of type size. But in here, let me print one thing. So allocator size is equal to size and L. Okay. And expected here. Now let me go ahead and run this code. You can see that still nothing has happened because we are not adding any element in vector or DQ. So let me park the DQ for a while or let it be as it is. Uh, let me put single element in both of them, single integer. So I am putting one in both vector and dq. And let me go ahead and run this code. And you can see some output over here. Why it's taking some time. Wow. It's taking time because you know what? I have to use my own allocator. So I have to use my alloc of int. Otherwise, it was using the existing allocator. So I'll say my alloc over here again int. Now it is going to use my allocator. So let me go ahead and run this. So see the difference. When I am inserting single element, I am getting allocation size as one. So one represents the number of types. Okay. So if type is integer, one represents four byte or eight byte depending upon machine. Similarly, 1024 represent 1024 integers. Okay. So this is the first difference you should consider when I am actually passing only one element vectors create size one. I mean, vector takes memory of size one and DQ takes memory of size 1024, which is huge. Okay. That doesn't mean you should stop using DQ. See this video for some more time to properly understand. Okay, so this is what happens. So 
again you might be getting different value other than 1024 you might be getting 2048 depending upon the compiler you are using the implementations are tend to be different okay now let's do one more thing let's get rid of dq for a moment and add something in vector let's say i am adding 2 now let me go ahead and run this code you can see that the allocator is being called twice first with 1 second time with 2 okay let me call again with 3 so if i am running this code you can see that allocator is being called three times first one then two then four and if i pass four um the output will not change it will still remain one to four and if i pass five the output will change and it will become allocator one two four eight so every time if i am inserting an element in a vector and there is not enough space in the vector what it does is that it allocates the memory twice of the current size okay now let's also overwrite the deallocate function so so that we can see some interesting thing so what we will get is that type star pointer and int size okay so here we can just delete the ptr and we can print the size in deallocation also deallocation size is equal to size and l small e okay and if i go ahead and run this code let's see what happens so you can see that uh, you know first uh, time it allocates the size 1 second time when i insert 2 it was not having a space for 2 then it's allocate size of 2 but it deallocates frees up the existing memory then when the allocation 4 happens it frees up the existing 2 when the allocation of 8 happens it frees up the existing 4 this deallocation is out of scope deallocation when vector goes out of the scope so just ignore this okay so this is what happens with vector now let me do the same thing with dq so let me comment the vector over here okay so i have a dq so what i am doing i am doing the same thing i can say uh, sorry d1 dot push back let's say 1 d1 dot push back let's say 2 d1 dot push back let's say 3 and d1 dot push back 4 and 5 okay so let me go ahead and run this code and you can see that the allocation happens only once okay this deallocation is happening after the scope or, or let me write something like end of pro program so that it will be clear and not confusing so this deallocation will happen after end of program okay so what happens with dq is that in this condition in this particular condition it seems to be more efficient because it is not allocating memory again and again and again every time it is running short of what vector does is that it learns it start from 1 10 2 4 8 16 32 64 128 256 that's the way it keeps on increasing memory every time the number of element exceeds now every time it comes up with a new memory it copies the existing element into the new memory and frees up the existing memory okay with dq this seems to be okay so what will happen if i add more than 1024 well uh, let me create a for loop for int ctr equal to 0 ctr is less than let 1025 and ctr plus plus and i am doing a push back over here for ctr i can put any value so let me go ahead and run this code now you can see that once the 1024 size exhausted what dq does is that it gives you a new block of same size 1024 or 2048 depending upon whichever compiler you are using and if i make it to 2025 look what will happen okay it still fits into let me make it 3025 and you can see that there are three allocation happening 
of the same block and there is no deallocation happens when the um, number of element exhaust the available size of 1024 because this is how DQ is being arranged. Vector will always be a contiguous block of memory. DQ will be a block of memory of size 1024 or 2048 and next block 1024, 2048 and they are kind of, you can see a kind of link list kind of thing. They are linked, okay? But it's the STL implementation where we do not need to worry about these pointers. So now you know how DQ works and you also know how vector works. Apart from functions, there is a specific performance consideration and that happens with the memory allocation of vector and DQ. Okay, so next time you have a choice between vector and DQ, think about this video before deciding what you want to use. Don't just blindly go ahead and say vector v1, okay, because that's not going to help you. Every bit of optimization counts in performance, okay. So that's all for this particular video, people. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like, comment, share and subscribe. Till the next time we meet. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good day. Take care.